during medieval time period some of the spanish voyagers yeah some of the portuguese etc when they move hello everyone i am sanjeev kumar faculty of geography at pilutus is today i bring another topic how to understand that whether the shape of earth is spheroid in nature or it is a flat during 5th century bc it was a major debate whether earth is being a flat or a spherical body gradually i will go through latitude longitude and their applications etc in this video so let's start so question whether earth is a flat body or having geoid shape means whether it having the spherical shape or whether having the flat shape during 4th century bc aristotle generally held that the earth being a spherical body because if we notice the side of created by earth especially during the eclipse time period or this eclipse mainly the lunar eclipse during lunar eclipse if we experience the side of earth then it cast its shadow over the moon not just like a flat body rather in round shape if there being a flat suppose that if the shape of earth is kind of cuboid yeah any other structure it's uh, said oh likely to be in same manner if it is being a spherical body if it is if it is round body then it's said oh which cast over the moon particularly during lunar eclipse time period then it's said oh will be more in round figure more in spherical shape so that is first evidence some of other greek geographers the father of geography that is eratosthenes during 3rd century bc who scale the circumference of earth by just measuring the incident of sun rays at different different places means how much angle the sun rays are creating over different different region typically during solar eclipse time period typically during equinox yeah during summer solstice or winter solstice time period so he measured the circumference of earth then he held that the shape of earth is more round in nature very late during medieval time period some of the spanish voyagers yeah some of the portuguese etc when they move across the oceans then when they circumnavigate the surface of earth they realize that from where they started their journey after moving around the earth they reach to the same place they reached over the same destination means if earth being flat in nature then they might have achieved end position of it there might be some starting point there might be some ending point but if it is spherical in nature means round figure so each and every time how far you move again and again you likely to become on the same point circumnavigation of earth which held that the earth not being a flat body rather is spherical in nature 
now visibility of sun circular horizons if you experience the incoming ship or outgoing ship ship which is coming towards the port or the ship which is going away from the port then with the help of telescope with the help of instrument for distance sight if you look on them then gradually you notice that ship lower portion is started to become disappear or non visible at more distance if ship is coming towards the port then you experience that first the topmost portion of the ship likely to be visible means it appears that gradually ship is moving down the horizons or gradually ship is moving up from the horizons so this is evidence related to circular horizons visibility of ship if earth being a flat body if here any ship is moving then always all part of ship likely to be having the same visibility if it is having the round shape then ship going away then generally the topmost portion likely to be become first visible or likely to be recede gradually in the last now another evidence sunrise and sunset each and every day you have noticed that sunrise ever from the horizons generally in the east if you experience that sun rises above the horizons it looks like at far distance the sun is gradually moving up into the sky and during post noon yeah during noon time period sun remain at max height further during evening time period gradually sun set below the horizons sun sets below horizons which held that earth not a flat body earth being is spherical in nature having round like shape so these are some evidences which prove that earth not a spherical body further due to rotation of earth gradually okay the appearance of sun gradually going away fading away of sun ya gradually disappearance of sun all such things prove that earth not a flat body rather spherical in nature i hope this confusion whether earth having the spherical body whether earth having the flat body is clear to you now we are moving towards another topic within this that is earth being spherical in nature its axis is tilted around 23 and half degree from perpendicular to plane of orbit this is plane of orbit plane of orbit means the plane in which earth is orbiting around the sun so from perpendicular to plane of orbit the earth axis is tilted 23 and half degree this angle is 23 and half this angle from plane of orbit ya parallel to plane of orbit the earth axis is tilted 20 uh, axis tilted 66 and half degree so due to this tilt you experience that generally during summer solstice the northern part of the earth is more tilted the northern hemisphere of the earth is more tilted towards the sun while the southern hemisphere generally move away or tilted away from the sun rays so here more portion of northern hemisphere likely to be experience the solar light which means day likely to be more longer here entire your arctic circle likely to be illuminated during the summer solstice time period and this summer solstice time period takes place on 21st june
Okay. So here, sun rays fall perpendicular to 23 and half degree north. Sun rays vertically fall over 23 and half degree north. It means at this time period, the length of day, length of day become max in northern hemisphere and night time period become minimum means longest days and shortest night occur during time period. Similarly, just opposite condition when this is December time period, winter solstice during this time period, what happens that southern hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun rays. So sun rays likely to be covered larger portion of southern hemisphere while northern hemisphere generally tilted away. Here, the length of day in southern hemisphere likely to be max, while during summer solstice, the length of day likely to be max in northern hemisphere. Means during winter solstice in, in month of December, the southern hemisphere experience longest day and shortest night. While in northern hemisphere, we experience the longest night and shortest day during winter solstice. During summer solstice, we experience longest day and shortest night in month of June. What happens during March, yeah, during September, in March, the sun rays fall just perpendicular to the equator. You can experience this earth just uh, in front of this digital board. So earth is here, just in front of the sun. It means half portion of earth entirely receiving the vertical sun rays. It means all part of earth now receive sun rays, which led to equal length of day and night. So in month of March here, equal length of day and night occur because sun rays just located perpendicular to equator. Similarly, during September month, again, sun rays fall perpendicular to the equator. That's why entire both northern and southern hemisphere experience equal length of day and night. Means here 12 hour day and 12 hour night. Okay. So probably it will take longer time period if I initiated uh, latitude, longitude. So in next video, we will discuss latitude, longitude. Hope uh, this video is clear to you. Each and everything seems to be okay. So see you in next video. Bye bye. Thanks.